In today's video, we'll be discussing all about mass transfer and all the unit operations that involve this kind of transfer. Now, mass transfer is another type of movement of molecules in a way that it is driven by what we call the concentration gradient. So as you can read from here, it is the flow of molecules from one body to another. And to make it short, it is a phenomenon wherein it takes place from a particular location where the component is proportionately high and then it moves to a region where the component is proportionately low. For mass transfer to take place, it starts with a higher concentration and then the molecules uh, flow to the lower concentration. You can view this as if it's heat. In heat, we, it, we know that heat travels from the hotter region to the colder region. And that's the same thing as our mass transfer. Molecules tend to travel from higher um, concentration or proportionality of the component to the lower proportionality of the component. To be able to understand more about this mass transfer, let's talk about the properties of mixture. We know very well that in a mixture, we have two components. And in this case, let's name them as A and B component. So if we want to talk about the concentration of A, which we refer to as M of M sub A, we know that that's simply the mass of uh, A and that mixture then divided by the total volume. And if you want to talk about the concentration of B, that's just simply the mass of B over the total volume of the mixture. Now, if you relate this to gases, because most of the time we'll, we'll be dealing with gases, we know that the ideal gas equation is PV equal to nRT. And then if you want to take the component wherein we relate the pressure of that certain component to the total pressure of the system, we know that the fraction can be expressed in terms of the partial pressure of A, of component A, over the total pressure of the system. So this can be B in such a way that we will consider the partial pressure of uh, the component B. And it also works for mixtures with more than two components. Let's say you have three or four. So in that case, you just have to take the partial pressure of that component and divide it to the whole system pressure. Now there are classifications or categories of mass transfer and uh, th there are generally three of them. The first one is the direct contact of two immiscible or partially immiscible phases. So imagine having um, substances or compounds that are actually polar or nonpolar. So basically if the rule like, like dissolves like will apply, uh, we'll be having something like um, miscible component. But if we try to like mix two components which are actually polar and nonpolar, then we will be able to get immiscible um, phases between these two. And there's a direct contact if, for example, you have an oil and an alcohol. So they're basically um, not uh, miscible. So that's one of the examples of this direct contact of two immiscible or partially immiscible phases. And then for number two, we have phases separated by membrane. And then of course, the last one is direct contact of miscible phases. So basically, this number three is something um, like a solution. So uh, there you have it, these um, three um, cases. The second case is just imagine if you have something like a phase and then there's just this thin membrane that separates these uh, two phases then that's the case for number two. Now before I discuss about this example, example one, let me just discuss the remaining topics here and because this one is very important before we start um, solving. So the first one that we need to discuss all about this fixed law. Remember we used to have this Fourier equation or Fourier law wherein the heat rate can be expressed in terms of the um, temperature gradient divided by the resistance multiplied, of course, by the thermal conductivity. Now we can apply the same principle as Fick's law. Now Fick's law can be stated in a way like the Fourier law or Fourier equation, wherein if we have a concentration gradient with respect to the length or the direction of this diffusion, we could say that the ratio of those two multiplied by the mass diffusivity or the diffusion coefficient and we take the negative of that because the direction is uh, changing from high to low so basically we will be able to obtain the fixed law of diffusion so this is actually stated in this um, expression that's na that's the rate of diffusion 
and that's negative DAB and DAB is the mass diffusivity of moles of A or component A to B and then that's DCA th that's basically the difference between the two um, concentrations of A and then divided by DX which is the direction of diffusion which is usually the length of um, the let's say the membrane or the con the element that we're talking about now there are ways we can solve for um, for the mass diffusion but um, and the most ideal state is given by this partial derivative but um, we will just be uh, doing something like a one direction at first so that uh, the computation be a lot easier so, so for example we're talking about this equimolal counter diffusion so we'll just be considering one direction here let's say at x only or y only so that we can minimize this equation because uh, this is actually a steady state condition in a general form now let me read these um, differences from conduction because we quite knew a lot about um, Fourier equation so based on fixed law while heat flow is in one direction the mass of one species flows opposite to the flow of the other component of the mixture here two component mixture is considered now this case actually happens uh, very um, evident in what we call the equimolar counter diffusion so basically when we talk about heat the movement of heat is just one direction meaning um, if it starts from low concentration I mean from low temp from high temperature then the heat will flow to the lower um, region of temperature so that's basically just uh, one direction of flow but in um, diffusion uh, the species actually tend to like um, when one flows from the higher concentration to the lower concentration because technically this high concentra concentration becomes lower the tendency of the higher concentration will just um, uh, go to the side which becomes lower basically they're just um, trying to reach this kind of equilibrium that's why they tend to flow opposite to each other that's the concept why this is kind of different because it's something like um, two directions that we're considering and then for number two even while one component alone diffuses under certain circumstances a bulk flow has to be generated as otherwise a density gradient will be created spontaneously which is not possible for example when water evaporates into an air body over water surface an equal quantity of air cannot enter the water phase the density gradients created is dispersed by some mixture moving away from the surface maintaining a balance this is termed as bulk flow now this case is very evident when we talk about convection because we know very well that in convection there has to be something like um, a difference in the temperature of fluids and basically when the fluid is um, in a large volume we, we can technically consider that the flow is bulk because the temperature is maintained at that condition and then there is no something like um, inversion of the density so in this case that's what happens actually in fixed law of diffusion we're trying to have uh we're, we're also we're trying to minimize the generation of density gradient because um that's technically impossible and the second one is that um, we're trying to maintain equilibrium in such condition that's why um, even though in certain circumstances uh, bulk flow is generated but density gradient is not created now this is very well supported by this um, diffusivity constant that is given by DAB is equal to DBA because if molecule A or molecule A moves to this direction let's say X and then of course this uh, molecule B has to move to that um, opposite direction because if it if it doesn't then we'll be able to create this again this density gradient which is in this case is not sustainable it's impossible that's why uh, we can develop this kind of relation that we have here that's actually the uh, fixed law that's dba and then dca over dx and uh, if we want to uh, try to visualize this um, opposite movement of the other component then that's just simply the positive or simply the negative of the original expression based on the component a so you just have to like um, interchange the letters here and that that means that b is actually flowing to um, a and by the way the concentration gradient will still be um, almost the same so in this way 
we could finally say that the rate is actually the rate of um, flow or the rate of diffusion for A is actually uh, the negative of the rate of diffusion of B. Now let's talk about this equimolar counter diffusion or it could also be equimolar counter diffusion because I'm actually talking about this even before I um, even before this discussion. Now this equimolar counter diffusion can be expressed in these two general equations that we have. Uh, this is just like elaborating the fixed law, just like integrating them, separating the variables and then integrating them. So as you can see here, we have the Na over A, that's the flux, and then that's equal to the AB, that's the diffusivity, and then the concentration gradient divided by the um, thickness. And uh, C for B, we have actually CB1 and then CB2. So that's just simply um, our A and B represented in terms of its own concentration. And then for gases, we can actually relate that in a way that if we have um, pressure gradient, so instead of using concentration, we use pressure because that's related to the amount using ideal gas law. Um, actually, this is kind of separated, okay, so don't get confused with this. So um, there is a pressure gradient between this um, PA1 and then PA2, and then X sub 2 minus X sub 1 is the difference between these two pressures. And then you just have to take this D over RT. D is actually the um, diffusivity constant. So you will be able to get uh, the same value for Na over A. That's the flux if we're talking about gases. So instead of using this C um, as concentration, you can use this pressure. with, Of course, with respect to the um, universal gas constant and then the temperature. And it is also important to know that in this equation, the diffusion is steady state because that's always what we assume. And then the gas mixture behaves in ideal gas. I've mentioned it already. And then the temperature is constant throughout. Yeah, so that um, we don't get any changes in volume. And then we have this diffusion occurs through constant area. And if it's not in constant area, then we need to actually um, go back to fixed law and then try to integrate that in the area of our concern. So the correlations in finding diffusivities of gases presented in table 5-10. I have included this because most of the time diffusivities are not given. Well, in some cases. And to be able to find those, um, we have these correlations that we will be using. Now there are a lot of correlations of this diffusivities for gases. You can check on table 5-10 and then it starts with the binary mixture of low pressure and then they are nonpolar um, mixture. Well, if it's um, polar, you can use this for binary mixtures with a low pressure. And then for the self-diffusivity, that's uh, basically um, the, uh, a component A diffusing to itself. So that's self-diffusivity. We, we have this. And then for supercritical mixtures, so those are the conditions wherein um, it's actually supercritical. So these are those um, correlations that we can use. Now, um, the easiest way, I mean, the easiest expression that uh, we usually use here is this Fuller and Shettler Giddings um, binary mixture low pressure nonpolar for equation. But of course, you have to check if they are actually nonpolar. Uh, as you can see here, we don't have to use the eccentric factor, the um, critical values of the pressure. We just have to take the molecular weight, the temperature, and then the pressure. And of course, this summation of the components in specific volume, I think. Um, I'm sorry, the atomic diffusion volumes. So this is actually the atomic this is actually the atomic diffusion volumes. So it depends upon the atomic structure. And of course the um the volume increments can be seen from here. You just have to take the summation of that and then raise that to the certain power and then um you're done with the A B. And you're really lucky if the problem actually gives you the value of your um diffusivity constant. Okay, so, so much for that. We'll not be dealing with this um, on a deeper level because we're not yet solving. So if we're already solving, then we'll just go back to these um, expressions. Now let me talk about the stationary media with specified surface concentration. So these are those um, that are actually still. I mean, the medium is not actually moving. So we have the equation for the plane wall. And then we also have the equation for our hollow configuration. So that's like um, a pipe. And then for the hollow sphere, so this is your expression. This is actually um, the same as your thermal conductivity that we kind of use 
when we ex want to express the resistance of those um, expression so this is actually the resistance to diffusion so the idea is that uh, if you have a flux or the mass diffusivity I mean you just have to like um, check the difference in the concentration and divide that with the resistance and the resistance is depending on your um, material configuration so that's for the stationary media so this is the equation and then um, let's try I mean before we proceed with the other topics let's try I'm um, solving for our um, problem one which is actually um, a very, very basic example now I won't be um, writing this expression again because actually uh, the solution is very clear for you but I just want to like um, read this and give you some insight on how it is done so uh, the thing here is in, in this problem there is actually a pipe I mean uh, there's actually a vessel for example this is a vessel and then there's um, ammonia inside this vessel and then um, it says here that we need to avoid the pressure build up in this um, tank for example and then we need to vent that so that um, we don't get too much pressure built up so imagine there's a pipe here and then you want to try to like vent this so the pressure on the inside is actually 1 atm so let's um, name that as p1 and then of course if you try to like vent this so what's left here is p2 which is actually at zero so that's basically assuming that um, all the pressure uh, have been or has been released to the atmosphere so that um, it's uh, something like together with this ammonia on the inside so the question is and of course we have this dimension we have the diameter of this pipe so that's actually 3 mm and then we have the pipe length which is actually 20 meters so the question is um, determine the mass of ammonia diffusing out and mass of air diffusing in per hour and we assume that this is the diffusivity constant the molecular mass of ammonia is kilo 17 kilograms per kilogram mole so this is what I'm talking about the inlet pressure is actually 1 atm on the inside of the vessel and then after um, some time after releasing so after uh, being vented out so we have zero at the outlet so you just have to use this kind of general equation for gases so that's just basically the difference between these two pressures and then this area i mean the this um diffusivity constant times the area and then divided by the universal gas law constant and then the temperature you divide that with your um thickness uh, in this case it's the length of the direction that this um this material actually travels and then times the molecular weight so just follow this expression and then you'll be able to get the 7.38 times into this negative 6 kilograms per hour and if we're asked to find the mass of air diffusing and the uh, mass of ammonia diffusing so basically this is actually the mass of ammonia that's actually diffusing now if you go back to uh, the fact that this is um, this expression actually it's not here it's actually right here uh, based on this idea that um, when mo one molecule is actually diffusing and then the other one is flowing to the opposite we can see right from here that that's the AB is equal to DBA and basically that makes it NA is equal to negative NB that's why it is also applicable for this case where we try to um, like use NA is equal to negative NB so substituting that with our expression we can say that um, instead of you know using this um, um, and a and B the mass of air is substituted for that but um, all we have to do is to convert this in terms of um, kilograms per hour of our um, air diffusing so you just have to um, something like multiply this with the molecular weight of air and then divide this with the molecular weight of ammonia so that um, we can convert that in terms of moles and then convert it again with respect to its mass basically if um, we're considering only the mass I mean the molecular flow rate of this I mean I'm talking about the moles uh, the value would always be equal to each other it's just that the other one is negative 
so basically what we did here is just something like um, we divide this with 17 to get the number of moles and then we multiply this with the molecular weight of air so that we'll be able to get the mass of air diffusing so that's basically what happened here and there you have it for um, the mass of air diffusing on the outside and remember again if we try to convert this in terms of the moles per hour you will just get the same magnitude for diffusion so it's like um, an equimolar counter diffusion with that um, let's have the next which is actually um, at a stationary um, condition so hydrogen is stored in a vessel so from that point you can imagine that this is actually stationary and then it diffuses through the steel wall of 20 mm thickness and the molar concentration at the inner surface is 2 kg mole per cubic meter so that's in moles and then the other surface is 0 so we assume that Ca um, let's say 2 that's 0 and then Assuming the plane wall condition of the AB is equal to 0 0.26 and the negative 12, we need to determine the mass of hydrogen diffused per 1 meter squared. So we'll be using this equation. Since this is just a plane wall, and then we know for a fact that the resistance offered by such kind of um, equations is that um, if we have Na, which is the general equation, we know that this is dCa over um, dx, wherein we can simply you represent this as ca1 minus ca2 and then the resistance now if this is just a plane wall we can see that the resistance is um, this expression and then if you try to substitute this r with this then we're left with ca1 minus ca2 and then r is actually l over the ab and then the area so that's basically what happened here this is our final expression something like this then we just have to um, multiply this with the area and if it's uh, the area is diffusing per one meter squared I mean the mass of hydrogen diffusing per one meter squared uh, we just have to like divide this by the area and that's just one so you plug in all the values of our Ca1 and then Ca2 divide with L and L is typically the thickness of the wall so that's 20 mm so this is our expression and then this is the final answer for um, the number of moles diffused per one meter squared but we're asked to find the mass of hydrogen so you just have to multiply that with the mass molecular weight of hydrogen that's 2 so that's 2 times 2.6 into the negative 11 and this is your final answer so that's just how simple the stationary um, diffusion works I mean stationary media with um, surface concentration works so in this number three problem it looks like we have the same problem it's just that this is maintained a four bar and one bar at the opposite side so basically that's the temp uh, pressure gradient of those two and then the membrane thickness is 0.5 mm this temperature of diffusion at this temperature the diffusion coefficient is 8.7 to the negative 8 so that's the dab and then the solubility of hydrogen in the material which depends on the pressure is 1.5 times to the negative 3 meters squared per second bar determine the mass diffusion rate of hydrogen through the membrane so uh, this problem is something like every concentration is given as a function of the equation and then of course the uh, pressure so this is something like the general expression of concentration and to be able to finally find this concentration because that's in meters squared per second bar we just have to multiply this 1.5 times the negative 3 to each pressure so that's 4 and then 1 and then from that we'll be able to get the value of the concentration 1 and 2 with respect to this um, generalized equation so we do have this c1 and then c2 from this expression then remember this is just a membrane if you go back to the resistances as you can see here, it acts like a, a plain wall so if it's something like a plain wall that's just simply l over da based on our um, plain wall resistance then just have to substitute that from our general expression and then you'll be able to get the final um, answer right here and if we're talking about this mass flux we're basically dealing with the mass of the component per meter squared of that area and then per second so basically if you um, are able to obtain uh, the diffusivity I mean the rate of diffusion in terms of moles then you just have to multiply this with the molecular weight which is 2 
and then you'll be able to get the mass of those um, component diffusing in this problem so that's just um, the simple mechanism of um, stationary media with surface concentration so if you're finding this uh, kind of difficult to follow through because I'm not actually the one solving so you can just um, read this through these are very easy problems and very direct um, problem solving with substitution just remember the formula obtained from the same concept of our equation that's the fixed loss so that's dca over dx and then that's the rate of diffusion and then we multiply this with the diffusivity constant and then the resistance is always dependent on the um, material if it's actually plain wall hollow configuration or sphere now let's talk about um, another type of diffusion we're in there is one component and then there is another um, component which is actually stationary or not moving and then this component that is um, not stationary actually diffuses to this stationary component so we call this the unidirectional diffusion so um, what we have here is that um, we're trying to name A as if it's um, the component that's actually diffusing through a certain medium so if you try to um, give an idea about it it's just that um, this b is not actually moving so instead of um, this flow being something like equimolar counter diffusion it's like um, unidirectional a is just moving through b so the um, equation is narrowed down into something like this um, that's the flux na over a and then that's equal to p over rt and then we have this diffusivity constant and then that's simply the, um, vo the thickness if I may say for the membrane and then the different um, expression from our previous equations is actually this one the logarithm of the difference between the total pressure minus the um, pressure at uh, outlet 2 and then the uh, difference between the pressure total pressure and then the inlet pressure or the starting pressure and in liquids this is expressed in terms of concentration instead of the pressure now let's have this for an example benzene liquid at 25 degrees celsius is in a cylindrical glass jar at 5 cm diameter at the bottom so air column is 30 cm above the liquid so if you want to try to like uh, visualize this so imagine we have a container filled with benzene so there's benzene here and then of course air is above this liquid so this is actually this air and then this one is the benzene liquid okay so if you're asked what is the stationary um, component here and you would of course say that air is actually the one that's stationary here because that's the vapor phase and in general the bulk volume or the one that is actually um, greater in volume or in mass which as compared to the other component is generally the one that is actually stationary in this problem we're not actually given by the total um, pressure or the system pressure but we know very well that if it is open to air we could say that uh, this is actually exerting um, a pressure of um, the atmospheric pressure so basically this is what we call the um, total pressure and in this case this is simply equal to 1 atn so from the fact that it's 1 atm we can just simply um, solve for this now in this case this problem used 10 to the fifth as if it's one bar of uh, total pressure so uh, let's just use um, 1 atm in this case so that's 101.325 instead of um, 10 to the fifth so this is our um, d that's given here that's 0 0.096 to 10 to the negative 4 and uh, this is our r and converted to um, c6h6 so that's 8315 over 78 so this is basically that um, a portion here and then the temperature is 298 so that's 25 so it's around here now this um, now this expression whole expression is actually the area okay so that's pi d squared over 4 because um, we have a cylindrical gas here of 5 cm diameter so basically this is 5 cm okay so that's it and then this um, 10 to the fifth is the pressure and this one is our um, diffusivity and how about this point 0.3 this point 0.3 is actually this x sub 2 minus x sub 1 and basically that's the air column 30 cm above the liquid 
so that's it and then finally the pressure i mean r which is actually this one so we're left with the ln of the difference between the pressures so if this is 101.325 then basically this is um actually not one but around um uh, more than one i think that's 1.0 something and then this one is around um i think 0 0.9 more than 0.9 i think so um with this let me just um calculate using the values of 101.325 instead so that's simply ln of 101.325 because our pressure one is zero because in this problem it is assumed that the partial pressure of vapor at the top is zero and then at the interface is 0.1 so that's actually zero bar and that's also zero atm so that's um zero then we have 101.325 for this and then it says here that it's 0.1 bar so we convert that 0.1 times 101.325 okay so with this um the mass diffusivity or diffusion rate is equivalent to so the answer using this um pressure of 180 m that's um 2.1148 times 10 to the negative 8 and that is in kilogram per second actually i used um 298.15 instead of just 298 so this is just um the uh, more exact answer for this problem it's just that we're using 11325 instead of one bar because uh, as you can see from this problem it's not stated whether the total system pressure is actually one bar so it is best to assume that it's a 180 m um, this problem actually used one bar because the partial pressure the partial pressure is actually given in terms of bar so it's like um giving a value that is um close to 180 m but in terms of bar that's why they used um bar but actually you can um just imagine the difference is i don't think this is a very large difference but uh, still it's um worth uh, using the exact value